Hi guys, welcome back to another one of my videos. If you don't know, my name is Alex and I have a channel called Health and Fit Alex. You can find me on all social medias at Health and Fit Alex. Today we're going to talk about why I am no longer vegan and I had a lot of thoughts that I had to write down so I will be referring to my computer uh, so if I'm looking a little down that is because I wanted to organize my thoughts in uh, a way to help people who might be vegan who find this video understand that it uh, my journey and why I was led to this point and that there is no hate on anyone who is vegan um, or plant-based. Let's just jump right in. So last year I started looking into my health and looking at it differently than I had been before and trying to find the root cause of some of my issues that I was having. Now I know now um, that most of the things that I was having are related to my thyroid and then I also have ADHD, anxiety, and stress. And so the biggest issue that I've always been trying to solve is my acne. See, I have some, I have some Hero Cosmetics uh, patches. Um, love them. And last year, I, as I delve deep into learning about thyroid health, I started really thinking critically about the food that I was putting into my body. I already knew and had been tested uh, for an allergy to dairy, uh, and that was kind of the road that led me down to being vegan initially. And to me, a lot of those foods were connected when I first uh, went vegan and so you know I didn't want to eat eggs if I couldn't put cheese in them but it was also you know six years ago that I was vegan and the food availability was completely different um, and like some of the things that I love um, were just being developed at the time some of the non-dairy products some of the fake meat products that I absolutely enjoy to this day um, didn't exist when I went vegan. Originally when I went vegan, I did it to increase my energy and reduce my acne. It helped a bit, but the main thing that made that real difference was cutting out dairy because I ate a lot of it previously. I had it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I had, you know, glasses of cow's milk and cheese in almost every food, and cheese as a snack. And that contributed to um, how I felt a lot. Now jumping forward into 2019, my acne started getting worse again. And that's when I started looking into figuring out my, what my be causing acne other than just having acne. And this research kind of continued into 2020 and is still continuing. And obviously I don't have clear perfect skin. Um, it's not as bad as it used to be, definitely. Um, but it definitely isn't perfect. And I hope to one day get to a point where it's not always on my mind. During lockdown, I was able to learn more about my thyroid condition and started to go to therapy for stress management. And doing all this research after going to my primary care doctor and then going to a specialist, uh, the specialist did recommend that I remove um, part of my thyroid because I had a nodule on there that was growing. Um, I do have a couple of videos kind of that talks about all of that a little bit more in detail. And during November and December of last year, I was also able to see a health coach. Um, she's absolutely wonderful and I will put her information in the description if you are also having similar issues that I had. 
she helped me identify certain trigger foods that were harder for me to digest and educated me on what foods were better for my body and my bio individuality. In the past year, I had started noticing that it was hard for me to digest certain plant-based proteins. Uh, this is, you know, regularly eating soy, um, some beans or legumes, things like chickpeas um, can really upset my digestion. Soy uh, can make me break out depending on the quality. Also upsets my dis digestion. Um, I can be um, sensitive to gluten and wheat and corn. A lot of those things that are higher processed and higher chance of having GMOs and pesticides. And with cutting out soy and with trying to reduce the processed foods in my life and processed not meaning like a bag of chips, but um, how much energy it takes to make something. It was really hard for me to create or think of a complete meal, which also did not help my ADHD because I wasn't able to put together food easily. It became really challenging for me and I had to put a lot of effort into it, which I did not like. And I started by slowly thinking about and researching how to be more sustainable and how to be better with eating animal products. Um, and so with that, I started adding in eggs and salmon. And now I eat a, something similar to the paleo diet um, with the types of food that I focus on eating. Something that I been working on and a big thing that I identified last year is my relationship with food and now not being vegan I do have a better relationship with food that I'm not classifying certain foods as bad and good. I eat similarly to a paleo diet but I would call my eating habits intuitive eating. I really try to focus on viewing food as fuel for my body and putting nutrients in my body. There are some things that are harder for me to digest and so I choose not to eat those things. And obviously, um, I don't eat things that I'm allergic to. For me personally and my health, veganism wasn't the right choice and for you and your bio individuality you will have your own specific set of needs if you can be vegan and you want to be vegan then go for it i think it's great i still love supporting vegan businesses when i can and we love going to the vegan restaurants around here um these are still a staple and products and brands that I can find in the stores. I still absolutely love to support and talk about um, because I still eat a lot of them because of being dairy free. Um, there still isn't a lot of choices out there for me with my allergies. And so a lot of the times things that are vegan are allergy free and allergy friendly and so I can have them because they don't have highly processed gluten or wheat or soy or dairy in them. I really think that we need to be more sustainable with how we are thinking of and producing our animal products in the world. Uh, the industrial farming, I don't like. I try not to support it whenever I can. By supporting local farms whenever possible, I try to buy grass-fed, grass-finished meats, pasture-raised eggs, and USDA certified organic animal products. It really took me a while to make this video because Although I love the vegan community, I also know there are some very vocal voices that won't 
like this video. And if you are someone who's struggling with your health, I don't want to deter anyone from being vegan because I did really enjoy it. I did love it. Um, that sense of community, that sense of purpose, I did really like that. But I am trying to share my honest story and educate you that there is a way to feed yourself in a healthy way and also a sustainable way for the environment. I know that um, vegan culture can sometimes be judgmental and I have been that person before thinking that that person who's not vegan anymore just didn't try hard enough or there had to be more answers and the truth is that you are your own person and you have your own specific set of nutritional needs and some people can eat vegan and live their whole lives and be athletes and bodybuilders and do amazing things and for some people it's not the answer it's not the answer to a bigger health problem that they're having if you are concerned for your health uh, please seek out the advice of a qualified medical professional if you can and if you are able to please try to support local and sustainable animal products all right you guys i'm sorry the tone of this video was a little bit more intense than i normally do um it's just that i wanted to make sure that i was putting all of the information out there that i needed to put out there so um in order for me to kind of put my thoughts together i had to sort of write it all down and then read from it but Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like my content, hit that little subscribe button. I do have a goal of hitting a thousand subscribers by October 2021 so I can be monetized. And if you love my content, please hit that little bell icon so that way you can get notified every single time that I post. I do try to post every Tuesday and Thursday here on my YouTube channel. That is all for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!